Hey, what's up you guys? I go here with another episode of the importance of quick tips series for console players. You guys saw the title, you know what we're doing today. I make videos like this every Monday or Thursday, so if you're new here, consider subscribing or checking out past episodes for other awesome console tips. So why are controllers important? Well, they're not. Actually, they are. Wait, what? What I'm saying is you don't need a fancy, souped up controller in order to be good, not by any means. But trigger stops, button paddles, and thumbsticks sure do make the gameplay experience feel a little more... <laughs> controlled. First, let's talk trigger stops. These can be important for a quicker reaction time. This is because trigger stops make it so you don't actually have to pull the trigger all the way down in order to shoot your gun. In a normal controller, when you go to shoot pulling the triggers, there's actually a point where the gun activates. So a trigger stop basically makes it so you don't have to pull the trigger all the way down, wasting time in order to shoot your gun. Pretty nerdy, I know, but in the long run, it kind of helps. It does help you win some gunfights in certain cases. I see this coming to play most helpfully with heroes like McCree, Soldier, Tracer. Ultimately, it will help you with response time for any hero for any game, so they are nice to have. But as I mentioned, it's not a do or die. It's not necessary, but does ultimately help. Next, let's talk paddles. For those of you who don't know, paddles are what's on the back of the controller here, and they are usually mapped to the buttons A, B, X, and Y. As you can see, I have four paddles on my controller there. And when you have paddles like this on your controller, it can help you jump, aim, use your ultimate while you're aiming, which is nice. You don't actually have to take your thumb off of the aiming analog stick to press any of these buttons here. So in Overwatch, there's really no need for jumping or crouching while shooting. Not necessarily. Jumping around can help you dodge some shots. Yes, it can come in handy, but not necessarily all the time. But there is one thing I have found super useful for the paddles in a game like Overwatch, and this is using your ultimate. As I mentioned, I do have a Y paddle back here. That would be this bad boy right here. And I never really use the Y paddle. Actually, with this controller, you can take them off. So I would always just play with the three paddles there. I never played with the Y paddle, but until I started playing Overwatch and I realized that your ult button is the Y button, I had to throw that sucker on, especially, especially for someone like Ana. When it comes to her nano boost, you need to be able to aim and ult at the same time. Too many times in the past have I been trying to ult somebody, to nano boost somebody, and I can't keep up with their movement because my aiming thumb is too busy trying to press Y and I can't keep up with their movement. So with the paddle, I can actually push the Y paddle on the back of the controller and aim at the same time, getting my accurate nano boost out, which is so nice. After I've gotten used to using the Y paddle more and more, it is helpful to be able to tranquility, to drop the beat, to do whatever ult I'm doing without having to move my right thumb. But like I said, again, it's not something you need to depend on. Only Ana. If if anything, I would if I were you guys, I would remap one of my bumpers or something like that to her ult button just so you can aim at the same time. Another hero this is good for is Tracer. Sometimes you want to kind of like aim up as you pulse bomb so you get a little arc in the pulse bomb so it kind of like comes out a little bit farther. That's also a good instance where you need to be able to aim and ult at the same time. Lastly, I want to talk about thumbsticks. As mentioned, these don't make or break your gameplay. However, they will win you some gunfights. Using an extended thumbstick can really improve your accuracy once you spend a day getting used to it. Short, stubby, normal thumbsticks that normal controllers come with are, are too short and they don't have enough leverage, so they really dumb down your accuracy. With an extended, longer thumbstick or even a control freak attachment to your thumbstick, you have more leverage and more precise accuracy, evidently improving your aim and when you knew some gunfights. Years ago, I bought an Xbox 360 scuff controller for Call of Duty, but after I bought my first scuff, I've never looked back from advanced controllers. However, after owning many scuffs for my 360 and for my Xbox One, I found scuff controllers easily broke within months, and I'm really nice to my controllers. And yet, my scuffs always would break. A button would go out, one would start sticking, it wouldn't hold power anymore, whatever the case was, that was scuff. Since then, I've purchased my Xbox One Elite controller, and after almost two years now, it's still going strong. This controller does give you the option for all the things I mentioned. It does give you the option to apply or not apply the 
trigger stops very easily. You just switch that little green button there and you got trigger stops again. Flip it back up and they're gone. Lastly, it does have paddles that you can change like I showed you guys. You can just easily take them off if you don't want them. You do have the option for all of those things with this controller. So that is nice if you do have certain preferences. In no way am I sponsored, I wish, by Elite Controllers or anything like that. I just want to help you guys out here. I've had experience with both controllers and I want to share with my viewers my experience with the both controllers to give you guys a better idea of what they're both like. Anyways guys, thank you for watching another episode of the Quick Tip series for console players. I'll link a playlist somewhere on the screen so you can watch more episodes and more awesome tips. I will see you guys next week. It's been Aiko with the Quick Tips episode. Goodbye.